Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicappers Corner brought to you by the Derby Barn Grill. I'm Mike Edson with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the uh, Sunday, September the 17th races at Hastings. First post is always one fifty. Yep. We do have eight races on tap, quite a few HBPA claiming uh, stakes races. Uh, the Once again, the claiming type horses get to run for a lot of money on, cash, this, yeah. on this day. $25,000 and $30,000 purses for uh, most of the claiming horses, which is kind of neat. They are the backbone of our industry. And usually every day there's seven or eight of them, the claiming horses, and you know, the stakes horses only run once in a while, but the uh, stakes horses really make, or the uh, claiming horses, claiming horses make yeah, most nice of to, our meeting. Nice to shine a light on them yeah. this weekend. And uh, yes, yeah, so we have eight races on tap. Keep an eye on that Sea to Sky pick six. It's over 20,000 on Saturday. Yeah, Keep an eye on this. If it over again. Hit, it's going to continue to grow if it doesn't. Uh, first race on the card is a 4,000 non three for three and up Colts and Geldings. Field of six here, going a mile and a 16th. I went to the five here, Instant Cash. I thought a very good race last weekend. He's coming back in a week, but his last weekend in that eight was Santa Fe Trail and Igor, who was a big draw front of the Dino Connolly Neos Barn. Thought he ran an admirable race that day. Now moves to Amadeo Perez, a more accomplished rider than Bug Boy uh, Lenny Cicheran. And uh, this guy's proven in the past he can get good at this time of year for Lacey Birmingham. I got Instant Cash on top of Off the Grid, who had been running uh, higher throughout his career. They claimed him for four, got beat by the one Jackson Teller, but he came back to get his four and on two last time. I just think he's going in the right direction for Mel Snow. I put him in the second spot, and I put Jackson Teller, who's uh, very formidable at this price. He's run twice for four. Second beat a neck by McCallum, who came back to win at the $8,000 level, and last time broke through with a win over off the grid. I got him in the third spot. Five, six, and one for me. Yeah, Jackson Teller's definitely, I think, the horse to beat. Yeah. He, he did def he lost to McCallum two starts back, and that was unlucky. He had to battle all the way on the head end. He had a battle again last time with off the grid, and he beat him. He held him off. I just think he's he's your horse, Enrique Gonzalez, three rides. Off the grid, if anyone beats him, I think it'll be him. I threw an awesome cause instead of an instant cash, but, I mean, I think they're interchangeable. But I thought one and six for your horses yeah. in the opener. I went Jackson Teller to win it. On the second race, uh, maiden $16,000 two-year-olds here. Going, uh, yes, three and a half furlongs again. Uh, I like the eight here, Storm Rocket. I really think this horse will. Uh, Quick. This horse was good last time. Uh, you know, showed good speed. Going six, six furlongs was kind of the, you know, uh, obviously faded at, at the end of the race, but still. 46 flat for the opening half. That's good. That'll yeah. get him the win in this race at this level. It's she's the horse is dropping. Uh, it's a Storm victory. Gets a great draw on the outside. I think Storm Rocket is really solid in here. How about the four Cassidy finale who had every chance to win last time was losing ground at the end under par but still that time was pretty fast at 39 and 3 and I put the two horse fortune seeker in for third another one you know a decent second behind locked and loaded last time and uh, locked and loaded came back to run okay out of that race but I thought that was your next best horse but there's some interesting horses in here but I thought Storm Rocket uh, returning to three and a half furlongs after the horse Broke terribly in its first couple of starts. Didn't yeah. break terribly yeah. last time. So it takes them one or two starts to get, get the job done, Figure leaving the out, gate, yeah. which is what you want to do going three and a half. But I thought this horse was worth worth a look, especially uh, lightweight too. Not that weight matters going three and a half, but eight, four, two. Uh, I did go to the four. I went to Cassidy Finality. I thought under par was very well meant last time. Uh, started out in a main special, he took a big leap forward, got a 49 buyer last time. That's going to suit very well in here if he can repeat that. I got Cassidy Finale on top for leading trainer Phil Hall. I put Sun Ronita out of Mike Anderson barn, uh, daughter of Phaedra, Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, works look good. Uh, Lopez, Mike Anderson team up very nicely. Top connections here for a first time starter. Uh, so I'm going to go Sun Ronita in the second spot and I put Fortune Seeker in the yep. third spot coming out of that good locked and loaded race. Richard Hamill, of course, always keep an eye on him. Four, six, and two for me in the second. On to the third. Back to one of our uh, HPBA starter races. Well, not really a starter race. They're in for the price. It's an uh, yep. $8,000 price here for three up Colton. $25,000 Six birds. and a half for lungs. 25 k up for grabs. I went to the three here, Devil in Disguise. Definitely has to back class a former stakes uh, horse here at Hastings Park. Took a year off, came back this year at a lower level, and, and he's had three very good races. Yeah. Uh, hadn't ran in two years. Just gets beat ahead behind uh, with Cowboy Phil Nam's buddy, that four-horse photo in his first start back. Then wins for four, comes back and wins for 62.50. He's going the right way. He's got the back class. It's not an overly tough field. I like Devil in Disguise. To beat Lassie's Reward, who's uh, very tough, and he'll be running for 16 for Nancy Betts, and uh, the drop down to eight should... Uh, Definitely put him in the mixer. He's a cool horse that always shows up. 
And uh, what is he, uh, five for eight in the money this year with three force, and he's getting beat two, a length and a half. He's, and that's for 16. He's definitely right. playable in here. And I threw Krius in, uh, coming off a win at the 6250 level for Greg Tracy, Richard Hamill rides. Uh, another horse with back class that could be, uh, you know, going, working his way back up the ladder perhaps. I went three, two, and four. Yeah, I thought the two Lassie's reward was the horse to beat in here. Nancy reclaimed the horse, uh, had the horse earlier this year, and it obviously protected it for this race. Yeah. I mean, ran 100 times there for 16,000 and just can't win. And uh, But that's okay. The horse is down for 8,000. This horse is going to be pretty dangerous. There's some speed in here. you got Creus, you got Sir Barkley. This horse will be sitting right in behind them. Lassie's reward leaves the gate good, will be in position. And, you know, it's... It looks like she doesn't. He doesn't have speed, but when you're running for 16 ground, there's horses that are pretty nice in those races yeah. that are occupying the position you want to be in, and that's why it looks like oh fourth, fifth. You know, the horse doesn't have speed, but the horse will be laying third. The horse will get every shot to beat the four Creus, who was very impressive last time. I got to put him in for second. And I put the three horse Devil in disguise. I agree with the, the classy old stakes. Former stakes winner in for third. I went two, four, and three, but I think Glassy's reward has found a good spot here. Race number four, once again, another HBPA claiming uh, championship stakes event. $25,000 purse. This is for the $4,000 sprinters, Phillies and Mares. Mares. And uh, I've landed on the three Zanita Rose. I like this horse a lot. Gonna, it looks like there's going to be a lot of speed in the race. Is she the best in here? Probably just as. Either, if not the best, just a smidge below. But any of the other horses that are better than her, like Rachel Run, Texas Alley Cat, such a bargain or whatever, uh, they're speed horses. They're going to be a, a wicked pace in here. This horse is going to get a perfect pace scenario. And she moves back to uh, the Mike Anderson bar, which had a we're, lot of we're all, ha That's right, all the good success, was done. Yeah. Zanita Rosé to defeat Texas Alley Cat and Rachel Run. I thought 327. I went to our good friend Rob Maven here, Halloween Queen. I know there's other speed in here, but. Uh, she just rolled through her conditions. That eight and on three last time was a, a pretty tough race, and uh, I was really impressed with the way she ran. She's won three in a row. She's a filly with a lot of uh, confidence right, right now. Maven's done a good job there. So I'm going to take a flyer on number five, Halloween Queen, in my top spot. I agree with you, Zanita Rosé. It looks like it sets up for her. She's back in the barn. It's done all the good with her. Definitely playable in here. I like Zanita Rosé. And in the th third spot, who did I throw in? Rachel Run. Because she always shows she's up. She's money. When she, if she can get the lead, she's dangerous. Well, yeah. Got I, I don't her. see her getting the lead, but maybe Richard does good things, and yeah, maybe exactly. he'll get her on the lead. Richard's on her, and she's just a street driver. Yeah. She always shows up. I didn't want to lead her off the ticket. Five, three, seven for me in the fourth. On to the fifth. Another HPBA race. This one's for three and up Colts and Geldings. 4,000 going a mile and a 16th. Field of nine in here. I landed on the one, Crushing Candy, another uh, former stake source here at Hastings. Yeah. Definitely has the back class. Only got beat a half in the uh, River Rock Casino last year behind Stands and Command. In for 4,000, uh, the first time going short. Then when he went long, I mean, made no mistake, one right. by five. I don't see, I don't know who wants to go with him in here. He's breaking from the rail on Enrique Gonzalez. Yeah, and it's not a lot of speed. I, I think he's gone. I think he's tough to catch. I got Crushing Candy on top of Target Storm, mm -hmm. who will be rolling late. Uh, fits this condition very well. He's just a cool horse that always shows up. 21-time winner mm. out of 80 starts. Now in the Mike Anderson barn for Larry Potosny. Look who shows up to ride him, Richard Hamill. Got him in the second spot. And uh, after that, you can make a case for a lot of these. I decided to go with Street Map, a horse that, you know, when they're running for uh, a mile 16th for four, he's not winning, but he's, like, hitting the board every time. Right. Second beating a nose, second, third. So I threw him in for third. John Snow's done a good job of this. Classy seven-year-old son of street cry. One, two, five for me. I saw this, the race the same way. Crushing Candy is the horse to beat. There's no speed. I don't know who's going to win if Crushing Candy doesn't win. Uh, this horse is going to be probably a six to five favorite. It's that will be, be to very catch. dangerous to catch. As you mentioned, as back class. Talkage Charm is the one that may be off the pace, can win it. Uh, it's better than most in here. And I put the seven, Fleming's Beach. I looked another at him, interesting yeah. horse. That was between Street Map and Fleming's Beach. But I, I went one, two, and seven. But Crushing Candy is definitely your horse to beat in race number five. On to race number six, we do have uh, another HBPA claiming... Si uh, championship race, Mama 16th for the $16,000 claimers. Uh, the five Rebus has been always we love one Rebus. of my fans. I know. Uh, you I'm, love a, I'm the biggest fan of Rebus. You love Rebus. You've talked me I've on caught, I, I, a, last few I times. got him an eat to one one day. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Rebus, and 
this race didn't come up tough at all for 16. So I think Revis has got a big chance of winning. Put the two horse power corrupt, who's you know been rising the claiming ladder, but this horse did win some stakes. You know, this is a stakes yeah, he's horse a Jack in the Diamond past. Winner. So uh, this horse deserves respect, and I put the one Sunset Drive in for third. I thought the, you know Sunset Drive's horse. You know, one, it's been getting better as the distances get longer, so I put that one in the mix as well. But uh, Rebus, for me, is the horse to beat. I went 5-2-1. I, yeah, I got Rebus on top as well, uh, as you mentioned. You've always been a big fan of him. You talked me on to him. That race, what was that, 12-5 race back at the 22nd of July, where he said good fractions, 22-4, mm -hmm. and 4, 46. Uh, that was huge. And uh, then last time, a good second behind the very Just tough, ran awesome slate. Awesome slates that we picked in uh, the, the 25,000 So Rebus so. looks to be the boss in the air. I threw in We Found Gold for second of the Mike Anderson barn. Uh, he's one, always out. Yeah, he's another one that's like can jump up and get there. David Lopez and Mike Anderson team yeah. up very well together. And I really had a feeling that day. I didn't pick him the day of the eight, but as it got close to the race, I was like, this horse is going to win today. He's found himself in some tough races since then. Uh, just beaten three quarters in that uh, mile three eighths race. And last time in the sales take, uh, only beat four lengths behind, you know, Lord Vancouver, Santa Juana. Yeah. Those are tougher horses. No pace so. for the horse. Huh? Yeah, and, and not much pace in there as Lord Vancouver went to the lead and never looked back. I got We found Golden second, and I agree with Sunset Drive. I put Sunset Drive in the uh, third spot. One for 16. It was a conditional 16, but he won. Then he went up into that optional 25 with a soul cap, bluegrass hang, a square dancer. Only got beat three quarters of a length by square dancer. He and, wasn't uh, embarrassed. He only got beat three quarters of a length by square dancer. Square dancer would be the favorite in here. So uh, I got Sunset Drive in the third spot. I went five, six, and one in the sixth. On to the seventh. This is just a straight. This is not the HPBA race. No. It's just a straight, straight. 25, 25 for older boys going six and a half furlongs. Oh, you can make a case for a bunch of these in here. I went to Twist Grips. Hasn't run many times this year. He's only won three times. Uh, got into the deep end of the water. His first start in optional 35, ran fourth. Came back with a big effort, a very quick heat. Went down there in 17-2. Uh, and two. BC Charlie and 7-0 Allegra. 7-0 Allegra came back to crush in, in mm -hmm. an optional 35. Went down to 25, ran into Captain Jones on his best day. Just got beat by a nose and... Uh, He's just a cool horse. He was our top claiming older horse last yeah. year. Five for seven in the winner's circle last year. Looking to get back on track. I think he can do it here. I got twist grips on top of Coulterbury. Uh, throw that last race, and uh, he's right there. That last 25 with Captain Jones and twist grips. So it was only beaten three quarters of a length. Mark Clucci has done a good job with this guy. Good to see Hamill stick with him off that disappointing finish in that optional 25. He could rebound well in here today. Back sprinting, which is what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And a good work coming in this a minute and two fifths. Coulterbury in the second spot. And I put Dashing Dawn who did all his damage earlier on this year in for 25. Tried out the 35 class, didn't like that back in for 25. He could be more dangerous. Five, two, and three for me. I really think the one's the horse to beat in here. The, the odds, odds are good. There's no yeah. speed in there. Who's going to go with the odds? I didn't pick the odds are good, sorry but about I nothing? just... Yeah, he's not going <laughs> to... It's a mile and an eight. He's going to be a last. <laughs> sorry about nothing early. Uh, the odds are good. Is the horse can could go be going. 44 I know. I never give, the, I never give this horse enough going. respect. I never seem uh, to pick him, and he proves me wrong a lot. The pace scenario, like the best horses, you're right, are, are Twist Grip, Story About Nothing, be, a Dashing Dawn, Colt. These are the best horses. They, they, none of them have any speed. Yeah. And that, that, that poses a problem in a, in a race that doesn't have speed. And we'll have to see how the track's playing on Sunday. But uh, I went to the four brass and gold. I, I think he, returning to a sprint will really help this horse. He'll get to sit second. Off of the one, if he can win from there, we'll see. But, you know, he's not as good as he once was. But he's still, a, you know, a horse that has some talent to him. But the one, the odds are good, I think, is definitely the horse to beat. Uh, Catch him to win. You know, that's, that's the thing. He's going to go 22, 44. 109 and catch me if he can. The other horse has got to catch him. And I put the three horse dashing Don in for third. I didn't like, I, I just had no strong opinion on this race. Our horses are totally different. But brass and gold are respect coming in this race. Back to a sprint. I love horses going from routes that are hanging, routing and coming back to a sprint. He's won sprints in the past. He's won routes in the past, but he's... BC you know, Charlie's another one too that was yeah, very good sprinting and he went long dreadful. twice and back sprinting, he could be more dangerous. But yeah, I went four, one and three, but a good race. I left off Coulterbury, you're right, live horse. Uh, twist grips, always tough at this level. This, be, this might be your all button race for the it's, it's uh, a toughie. pick six. On to the eighth and final, I got $16,000 non at three lifetime going uh, six and a half furlongs. I ended up on the two slicky boy as he returns to his sprint. 
I thought a pretty good race for horses that close to a ridiculous pace last yeah. time going along. I think it'll set him up for a good sprint race. But the seven horse always sunny, who hasn't been seen in a while, back to the late July, but uh, running against better horses. We'll see if he can uh, catch them from off the pace and up at the one satellite storm will look very good winning for eight. Uh, this horse was on the money, you know, uh, no pace chase, you know, 47 half. Yeah. Went in 17 though. The track wasn't fast that day. That was a big effort for satellite storm. So I thought he's ready for the jump up. Actually, he's been running with that caliber in the past. So it really isn't, he's not class tested in here. He's still shown he can run with good horses sprinting. 271. Uh, I did go to the seven. I went to Always Sunny on top. Yeah. Uh, oh, definitely. He's, he's run three very good races this year. Third each time behind Silvertown, Sergeant Rick, Soul Cat. In for 16, non three. Any of those horses would be a very slim price. I got Always Sunny on top. I put Kermode in the second spot. Uh, just yeah, a, a, a different horse last year or two, and I thought really woke up last time. A good second behind Salzburg, uh, who dropped into the $16,000 level and was very tough, which he figured to be. He went on and won, yeah. but he finished ahead of Catch Me, and Catch Me is a horse I like, and a conditional race for Catch Me. Catch Me is very tough in here, and Kermode has the back class. He was our top, one of our top two-year-olds mm -hmm. here last year, Jack Diamond Futurity winner. Has not aged into three well. He's kind of yeah. got the three-year-old blues, yeah. but I saw some life there last time, and I'm hoping that he can keep that going the right way, and he could be dangerous in here. But Kermode in the second spot, I put good as they get. Uh, coming, another one coming out of tougher races, you know, with Captain Jones, Twist Grips, running against those older horses for wide open 25, only got B2 lengths. Last time in that Soul Cap Bluegrass thing, a square dance race, obviously tougher. Mel's got him in for 16, non three. Uh, he wanted to make the special weight earlier on this year. I put him in the third spot, seven, six, and three for me. In the eighth, that'll do it for our analysis of the Sunday card. Up next on screen will be our selections. Mike, as always, you're Back first. Back in race number one, I went to the one. Jackson Teller, going to go one, six. I think one and six are the two horses in there. One, six, three for me in the opener. Race number two under the eight, Storm Rocket. Kind of like this horse at a bit of a price. For Julie Wicks, eight, four, and two. Race number three went to the two. Lassie's Reward, two, four, and three. Race number four, the three. Zanita Rosé going to take advantage of a... I think what looks to be a hot pace scenario, three, two, and seven. Race number five went to the one, Crescent Candy. No speed in this race. This one should be tough in a wire to wire win. One, two, and seven in race five. Race number six, the five, Rebus. Always solid going along, five, two, and one. Race number seven, the four, Brass and Gold. Former stakes winner, four, one, and three. And in the uh, eighth and final, I really like the two slicky boy. I think that return to a sprint's going to help him out a lot easier, too. Two, seven, and one. And on to my selections. There we go. Back in the first, I went to the five. It's the cash. Go with a bit of a price in the first over the six and the one. Yeah, good. In the second, I went to the four, Cassidy Finality over the six and the two. In the third, I went to the tough old campaigner number three, Devil in Disguise over the two and the four. In the fourth, I went to the streaky number five, Halloween Queen over the three and the seven. In the fifth, I agree with Mike, Crushing Candy looks to be a handful in here over the two and the five. In the sixth, I'm with Mike again on number five, Rebus. We love Rebus over the six and the one. In the seventh, I went to another tough old horse, number five, Twist Grips over the two and the three. And in the nightcap, I picked number seven, Always Sunny over the six and the three. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day to watch Handicapper's Corner. Our next live cards will be next Saturday, uh, the 23rd, and uh, Sunday, the 24th. Yes. We'll have seven races on the Saturday, eight on the Sunday, hopefully. If everything goes well, we fill all our races. But uh, should be a great weekend. Uh, HBPA claiming uh, yeah. Very good stakes day, day and uh, yeah. a lot of good action, a lot of money for a lot of our uh, everyday horses that really do make up the the backbone of our industry, the uh, claiming type horses. Uh, if you can't make it out to the track on Sunday, please do come on out here to the Derby Bar and Grill if you're in the South Surrey yep. area. Uh, we'll have lots of simulcasting on. We've got Belmont going on, Los yep. Alamitos. Churchill's open. Churchill Downs is coming on yep. this weekend. There's lots going on as well as Hastings on the big screen on behalf of Drew. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck in your wagers this weekend. We'll see you next time here on Handicapper's Corner.